Well, brewer and spirits manufacturer Marty Craft has been placed into administration less than five years after launching on the ASX. Joining us live now, Chief Investment Officer at The Motley Fool, Scott Phillips. Uh, Scott, good morning to you. Thanks for your company. So just looking at this piece in The Australian today, which are the beers that we might recognise here and what went wrong? Pete, good morning. The answer is not many beers. That's kind of what happened. The real challenge for craft brewers, mate, is that they thrive on being new, different, innovative, cutting edge. The problem with that is if you don't manage to keep doing that, if you can't kind of run to stand still, all of a sudden you become pretty irrelevant pretty quickly. Fads and tastes change mm. so incredibly quickly. And the mainstream brewers, the you know, the, the VBs, 4X Dewey's, uh, those guys thrive on the same beer as always. People who like to go back to the fridge and grab the same thing or grab the same thing from the barman at the pub. Uh, but the new beers are like, what, what's new? What's coming out? What's different? Of course, IPAs led the surge uh, and plenty of derivatives besides. When you back that off, though, and then you look at the fact that a few things. So firstly, the trends aren't necessarily changing as quickly, i.e. people are going back to the same beers. That's terrible news for craft brewers. But also, too, there are so many of them. The boom that created Mighty Craft created a whole lot of others. And this is about the third or fourth major. Now, the first listed company, the third or fourth major craft brewer to go broke in recent times. So it is industry-wide. The other thing, of course, is we know the economic challenges. We're simply not prepared to pony up as much uh, yeah. for some of these beers as we were previously. Uh, going back to some of the, the, the cheaper and known favourites uh, is really taking a bite. I have to say that I'm probably well. one of those customers. Scott, sorry to interrupt you there, but I've, got, I've gone back to a Carlton Draft, you know, after, you know, I didn't mind a, a craft brew every now and again, but I just yeah. found them too sweet and they were just too expensive and I just, I just want to go back to a standard lager and I know I'm not alone there. No, I think you've nailed it, mate. I think, you know, IPAs and all that sort of stuff were fun and new while they happened. But at the end of the day, if it's not new, it's not interesting, it's not different, all of a sudden it's another mainstream beer. I'm the same, mate. I'm a, I'm a dark beer drinker. I could go back to the two is old or get us more often yeah, than not. Yeah. Uh, and at some <laughs> point, yeah, at some point, literally, you kind of say, well, hang on, there's so many of these. How do you stand out? It's the, it's the irony, right? When yeah. they're brand new, everyone flocked to them because they were something new, something different to drink. All of a sudden, when they're when they're everywhere and they're everything, uh, there's nothing new to have. And that that is, as I said, it's what created them. Mm. It's also what's making it so hard right now. We've done a few um, stories on this particular problem, Scott. I mean, it's a bad time for pubs too selling beers because you know the alcohol taxes are going up, so are the beer prices. You know, some some of those international beers, you've got to fork out twenty bucks for a pint at the moment. So, not many people yeah. are going to pay that. So something's got to give. That's exactly right. Oh, by the way, we should probably look at the grog tax separately too. It's one of those things that kind of makes some degree of sense, but when it gets so much higher, I mean, I'm old enough to remember I used to work in a grog shop when I was going to university, uh, and I'd pay you know, you'd pay 22, 23 bucks a case. Yes. You're paying three times that now. I know I'm getting old. I don't want to do the rose-coloured glasses thing. It was a long time ago, uh, but that reality of you know at some point. Uh, the alcohol prices are increasing much faster than they otherwise need to. Now, there are some public health benefits to reduce drinking, of course, so that's sure. a whole bigger policy conversation. But at some point, you don't have to look at it and say, hang on, 20 bucks for a, for a pint, particularly when so much of that is now tax. Mm. I think on a bottle of spirits, the tax is probably close to 30 bucks these hey, days. Hey, you know what? Uh, in other words, you know. Just on. on that point, I mean, some of those craft beers, you go to a bottle shop and they're 25 $26 for four beers. That's at a bottle <laughs> exactly. shop. Exactly. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, right? And there's not, I mean, there's a bit of margin there. Uh, yes, it's harder to make small volumes of craft beer, so their costs per unit are higher, uh, but the taxes is a remarkable component of that. So, yeah, yeah. Look, again, it's, it's a policy conversation for another day, but it is sure. responsible in part uh, for the challenges these guys are facing. Yeah, no, I've had a, had a few people talking about this and the rise of those taxes. Yeah, it is a separate issue, but anyway, uh, sad for those companies. It is, it is a problem. Mm. All right, Scott, good to see you. Thanks for your time.